Welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to graph uh, the uh, this ellipse, as well as determine the vertices, the foci, and the co-vertices, as well as the center. So to be able to do this, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to be able to determine, is my major axis horizontal or is it vertical? Because that's going to determine where I'm going to put my vertices and my co-vertices and my foci. Um, the center is always going to remain the same um, if it's horizontal or uh, vertical. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to set my ellipse equation equal to 1. So I'm going to divide by 100 on both sides. Now this 100 is going to divide into both of these. Well, here I can reduce this down to 1 fourth, which would just be x squared over 4. You can put the 1 there, but we don't have to. Here, divide the 100 into 4. That's going to reduce down to 1 25th. Again, you can write the 1 up here, but we don't have to. OK, so now we have um, it in more in a standard form. And one thing I notice is um, I don't have an h and a k, right? Because when we're looking at that standard form, um, you know, x minus h squared, y minus k squared, we don't have an x and an h. So therefore, the center is always in the form of h comma k. Well, since there's no h and k's for this, my center is going to equal 0 comma 0. And that's going to be very nice and helpful. Uh, the next thing is now I need to determine what my a squared is and my b squared. And when I'm looking at ellipses, it's very kind of obvious to be able to choose which one you want. a squared is always going to be your larger denominator. So I look at 25 and 4, and I can say, OK, obviously, a squared is going to equal 25, where b squared is going to equal 4. However, we need to be able to figure out what c squared is, because that's going to help us identify the distance from the center to the foci. So I say c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. That is the equation that we're going to use to help us solve for c squared. So c squared equals 25 minus 4, which equals 21. All right. So now, after I've figured out my a, b, and c, the next thing I need to determine is where is my major axis? Because it's so important for us to make sure we write down and understand that the major axis contains the vertices, the foci, and the center. I know my center, if I'm going to graph this, I know my center is at 0, 0. But are my vertices and foci going to be vertically or horizontally? So I go back and look at my equation. And whenever my a is under my y coordinate um, of my center, therefore, my major axis is going to be vertical. If these 25 and 4 were swapped, then my major axis would be horizontal because it would be under the x. So therefore, now I know my major axis is vertical. Now, since I know it's on vertical, it's going to be going up and down. My vertices and my foci are all going to lie in that line. Now, the distance from the center to my vertices is going to be the value of a. Well, right now, I just know what a squared is. So to find a, I take the square root of both sides, and a equals 5. So again, that's kind of like an absolute distance from the center to the vertices. So I'm going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's one vertice. And then down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my second vertice. To find my co-vertices, now, if my, so you can see my major axis right here. It's kind of like a little dotted line. My major axis is vertical. That means my minor axis is going to be perpendicular to that, which will be a horizontal. And the distance from the center to the co-vertices is b. So to figure out that, I take the square root of both sides. And you can see b equals 2. So therefore, I'm going to go over 2. That's going to be co-vertice 1. That's going to be co-vertice 2. Now, to identify what my foci are going to be, my foci are, again, going to be the distance from the center to, um, or sorry, the distance, the value c from the center to both foci. However, um, you've got to make sure you remember they're going to be they're going to lie on the same axis, which is the major axis, as my, vert, as my uh, vertices. So therefore, whatever my value of c is, to solve that, so c squared equals 21. Take the square root, take the square root. So c equals the square root of 21, which is roughly going to be between 4 and 5, 4 and some decimal. I don't know. I don't have a calculator. I'm not trying to be exact. I'm trying to uh, make you have a good idea. So it's going to be between 4 and 5. Um, so. Again, I'm going to follow on this major axis. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm just going to estimate my point. And then down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And add a little change for 4, um, you know, between 4 and 5. 
and those are going to be my foci. Now again, obviously, if you're graphing or you need to find that exact value, we can go ahead and use a calculator. But I'm just trying to get an idea exactly where everything's going to be at. Now, to graph my ellipse, I'm just going to connect my vertices and my covertices. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I guess we can go ahead and write down what the vertices are. So my vertices are now going to be at my point 0, 0,5 and 0, 0,5. negative My covertices are going to be at 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. And my foci are going to be at 0, comma, square root of 21 and 0, comma, negative square root of 21. And where my center is at 0, 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, take an equation of ellipse, graph it, and be able to identify the major important information. Thanks.